Good morning. It's Friday, May the 15th. Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis with your HCC News and Information. Thanks for joining us on this Friday. We made it through another week. Brittany Pacheco, my co-host, joining me at her home. You're back home again today. Another week gone by, Brittany. Yeah, but, you know, does it really matter at this point? We're just kind of you know, cruising on through. But yes, we've made it to Friday. And Todd, we're one week away from our virtual HCC graduation. More talk on that later. But everyone who's watching, thank you for joining us. Be sure to like our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages. And head over to our YouTube channel where you can also subscribe. Hit that notification bell to find out the latest from HCC. That's right, Brittany. You know, we're working from home these days, but is this going to be the new norm? Brittany, would you like to work from home from this time on? I struggled in the beginning, but I've come to appreciate yeah. working from home and I think I can adjust. You know, it's, it's a possibility. Well, we're going to talk about working from home from here on out. We're going to talk with Michael Garfield, the high-tech Texan. Good morning, Michael. Thanks for being here. Good morning, Todd and Brittany. And I'll tell you what, I've been working from home like you for the past three months. And I could do it forever, but I'm going to give you some pluses and minuses why a lot of people, they don't want to. Yeah. Well, we'll look forward to talking with you in a few moments, Michael, but I want to start off with a very special guest. You know, Houston Community College has HCC Coleman College of Health Sciences. We have a dental assistant program, dental hygienist program, but what is the world looking like for the dental industry? How are dentists dealing with this COVID crisis? I've got a very special guest and I'm proud to introduce Dr. Chad Duplantis from Bosso Creek Dental Partners up in the Fort Worth area. Good morning, Chad. Good morning. How are you doing? Thank you okay. for having me. And, uh, we we've had a we we kind of know each other. We've known each other for a little while. A little bit. <laughs> for those of you so. who don't know, Chad is my brother, and uh, he lives up in the Dallas area. I'm very grateful for having him on the show today. And Chad, I want to talk about what's going on in the dental industry. I know you've had uh, worked in a practice, have your own practice up there for the last 15 years or so. Fossil Creek Dental Partners in Fort Worth. Let's talk about what's happened over the past two months, because I know you just opened your business again, but when, this, when did this all become real to you and what did it lead to in the beginning? Yeah, I think the, uh, the drop, drop date for our practices was about March 15th. And um, leading up to that, we actually saw a little bit of the writing on the wall. We, we, we knew that the COVID, Corona, whatever you wanna call it, bug was, was heading over. Uh, we knew that it was starting to take America by storm. Um, and our first indication, uh, believe it or not, was the shortage of masks. So back in about January, I told my staff, I said, how many masks do we order? They said X amount. I said, well, I want you to double it. And they said, well, they've already limited our mask supply. I said, all right, well, I want you to call every vendor that we deal with and start ordering masks as often as you can. So we used to go from ordering, let's say 200 masks every two weeks to being able to order 20 masks from each vendor uh, once a week, in some cases, once a month. So the shortage started getting real. That was in about February. And so we shut down our practice, I believe March 18th was our last full day of work. Um, and then we were just pretty much shut down for the past almost two months. And you have a, a fairly good sized staff as well that you worked with. You, you, uh, well, during that shutdown, you and I had talked, and I guess one of the most frustrating things is you really didn't know when you were gonna be opened up, and, but you could take emergencies, is that correct? Yeah, so we could take emergencies, but um, we had to follow the ADA guidelines, which were extremely strict. So basically our emergency that we could see was in order to keep a patient out of the ER. Um, and fortunately, that's a very rare instance in, in dentistry. So um, anything else that you saw would be considered quote unquote urgent or elective. And so you had to be very judicious in what you saw. So the majority of what we once classified as an emergency, those people would call, crown came off, something broke, this or that. Uh, what's your pain level? Four, five. I'm sorry, folks. You know, we're we're under strict orders that we have to postpone that. 
So, and you, there seemed to be a random date as to when Dennis could could reopen again. Um, and what what was that all about? Because it seemed like certain businesses could open at a certain time, but they picked what May eighth that you guys could open up again. Yeah. So Governor Abbott had a uh, press conference on, um, I believe it was like April twenty sixth or whatever that Monday was, the twenty seventh, and and he gave us the the May eighth uh, option, which was really good. And so that whole week was kind of a roller coaster ride because it started off that we had very limited restrictions upon opening, and then there were some other lobbying groups that got a hold of the governor and, and his team and, and they rewrote those rules. And so it was very strict upon us reopening. So we are able to expand what we do. Um, our personal office uh, has, we, we are not doing dental cleanings to full capacity. We're seeing very few patients on a daily basis. And uh, I think we're at about 30 to 35 percent capacity right now and that's going to stay that way until at least the 25th of may for but you are you scheduled through then do you have appointments through uh, that part of may or there, is there a demand um, right you having to turn people away because of the 35 percent yeah we are we are uh having to turn people away and so what the general public uh may not really know is that dental offices use a lot of instruments and tools that generate aerosol and that's one of the largest uh, or the most popular mode of transmission for the virus and so it, it creates a susceptible environment if that's not if that's not controlled so uh, the state board and the powers that be have minimized the use of aerosol generating instruments in the office so that's mainly what's used in our cleaning our, our hygiene department in our practice so um as far as being open, yes, we're scheduled. I mean, we're booked out. Uh, the doctors, we have two doctors, Dr. Kirkham and myself, and we're booked out through next week, and then that will book out through the 25th. We're seeing very limited patients in the hygiene department. And, um, you know, like I said, yes, we are booked, but we're booked to 30, 35%. I don't honestly see when we'll return to 100%, if we'll ever return to 100%. That was going to be my next question. Do you see any normalcy getting back into this? Um, it seems like you're just struggling to deal with the low amount of patients, but also answering the demand for people who want to come see you. Yeah. I mean, there's a need. There's a dental need in the population. So, yes, I, I, it will be a new normal. Um, I think that uh, whether we were at 100% beforehand, um, I truly believe that we'll get back to 90 95%. Will we ever uh, – be able to see as many people as we once did the answer remains to be seen and really it just depends on what happens with this virus I believe we flatten the curve right now um, let's see if we can if we can break that curve down and diminish the number of cases and if that happens then I think we could return to a normalcy um, you know or a or as you said a new norm at some point yeah, one of the things we're, we're dealing with is this new norm or these extra charges we're getting at the dentist. And maybe you can yeah. clarify why that is, because I know I called you a few weeks ago because my wife went to the dentist and, and she had an extra charge for decontamination fee. And I told you about yeah. it. Said, well, actually, yeah, that's the new normal. Now. Yeah. So, so basically, um, thanks to the ADA, we do have a new code that you may see on your dental bill and, and uh, it's D1999. And that, that means nothing to you all, but you'll see it. And it, there's no clarification for the code. So it's gonna be called something different in every office that chooses to charge that fee. And um, <clears throat> it really is a cost per patient, per procedure. And a lot of people are referring to it as PPE or per <clears throat> excuse me, personal protective equipment fees. And that's not really what it is. We've had to instill a bunch of measures. Um, our waiting room is completely closed down. Uh, we have to minimize the traffic through the office. We have to go to touchless payment. So we're going with like Apple Pay and, and touch to pay. We're going with text to pay. So we've implemented a lot of procedures into our office. Um, we've added a bunch of different sanitation measures. We always upheld the highest standards in sanitization or whatever you want to call it and, and disinfection in our practice. But we've actually amped that up a little bit and you're having to sanitize the office basically all over after each patient. So PPE is a big portion of that fee because the PPE that the state has mandated is extremely expensive. Wow. However, um, you know, the disinfection procedures and, and sterilization procedures and the, the extent to which we have to do that ha has gone up 
quite greatly as well. So there is a substantial fee that goes along with that. Chad, we have a, a very uh, extensive um, dental hygiene program and dental assistant program. We have a number of graduates that come out of that each year. What advice do you have those graduates who are, who are going into that program? Um, obviously, the demand is still there from what you're telling me. Yeah, I think that, you know, no matter what, there will always be a need for dental care. Um, and I think that there will always be a need um, for, for hygienists and for assistants and, and for dentists. And so I would not necessarily be, be fearful of going in because there, there will be a job afterwards. I think that just due to the, the concern over the virus, I think that some of the numbers entering those auxiliary programs will diminish. Um, but I do think that there will always be a place for, for that personnel in, in America. And so um, we're going to get through this one way or the other. We're going to get to a new normal. And hopefully it's really close to the normal that it was prior to this. So um, don't be fearful. Um, you know, get into it. Uh, you know, go all in. And just the, the one thing that I would say is that when you when you do work at this point in time, you're going to have to work for for a dentist and and under a dental license and just make sure that the, the dentist or, or the professional that you're working for has your best interest at heart and follows the guidelines to the best of their abilities to keep you and their patients safe. Dr. Chad Duplantis, uh, thanks for joining us this morning and letting us know a bit about how things are going for dentists out there and the future of the industry. Chad, do you have time to stick around for the next half hour or so? Sure. Happy to. Good deal, because we're probably going to get you to comment on this next subject we're talking about. Uh, I've got Michael Garfield from 950 AM KTRC Radio. Michael, good morning. The High Tech Texan back on the show. Thanks for being here. I can't believe it's Friday, but thanks for telling me it's Friday, because if you didn't tell me that, I had no clue it's Friday. This is the world we live in, Todd. But it doesn't matter anymore. Friday, <laughs> it's, all, it's all the same thing. Ah, hey, yay. It, you know, we were talking the other day, and Twitter made a huge announcement this week. They're going to be letting all their employees not only work online now, but forever. Yeah, that was a big announcement. And I want you to think about this because I've been in the tech industry for a long time. I started at Microsoft back in the late 90s. And the tech companies, think of Silicon Valley, they were all about perks, luring people to work in their offices. They would offer, you know, the free caffeine, the free sodas, the on-site massage therapy, the chiropractors, the lunch buffets, beer and wine on tap. There was a lot of perks. And what Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey announced last Tuesday, probably one of the most interesting perks ever, the option to never return to offices again. And again, it's an option, not mandatory. And my question is, I wonder how many people are going to take hold of this, but also this is going to be the lead dog in a number of other companies, not just the tech, but also regular companies uh, of letting their people work at their offices. And there's a lot of pluses and there's a lot of minuses. Yeah, you know, I was reading something about uh, rental space in, in office space in Manhattan, and there are landlords and, and real estate developers that are literally freaking out right now because they don't know what's going to happen. If companies start allowing people to work at home, all that office space that companies are paying to rent is not really going to be needed, and companies may decide, you know what, we're saving a lot of money with this office space by letting our folks work remotely. Yeah, I'm not going to speak for the commercial real estate industry, but I was thinking about the paradigm shift back in late March when we started realizing we're going to be working for home for a while. Yeah. That commercial real estate industry, just anecdotally to me, it's going to be hurting. Um, and the fact is we're learning to work remotely. Look at us. I mean, none of us probably heard the word Zoom four or five months ago, and we're all experts on video right now. And for the most part, say for Chad, obviously, and we'll talk about his industry later, we're getting things done. I look at the tech industry and I'm just seeing reports and data that people can communicate. People can actually work in teams. There are software applications like Zoom, like Microsoft Teams that allow everybody to work together. So in many instances where you don't have to physically build hardware or actually work on someone's teeth, you can work remote and it's working well. That's why companies are looking at remote operations. 
Well, Chad brought up a good point, which uh, I think falls into all business. When you have meetings with people, they usually go to your office. They may sit in a waiting room to uh, to to wait for you to to take their appointment or or to wait for you to come out and meet with them. Chad, you're saying that you you don't have your waiting room open. Are you having uh, your clients wait and your patients wait in the car or just come in at a specified time? How is that working? Yeah. So what we've done, it's actually uh, pretty interesting. We use a, a, a uh, voice over internet protocol phone system. So, so what they do is when they arrive to the office, they text the office. It pops up on the computer screen. Hey, I'm here. We shoot them a text right back. Please wait in your car. We'll tell you to come in when it's your time to come in. And so, um, that inner constant communication and patients are loving it because they know when they come in, they're going to go straight back to the room. And so it's, it's really, it's been real beneficial. Now, Michael, you know, what is the, the paradigm shift is happening now because we have to, we're, we're under this COVID crisis, but what do you think it was before? Were companies just not trusting that their employees are going to be, were going to be productive? What was the holdback in your opinion that was uh, keeping companies from letting people work remotely all the time? That's a great question. And actually I can give you just some stories that going back from the things that I've read and a lot of my friends who worked out in Silicon Valley, let's go to Yahoo. Yahoo, you know, way back in the day, that was the company uh, there years ago, they did not want any of their employees working from home. And to this day, Apple does not like employees working from home. Number one being it's the security. They're working on so many secret projects and what have you. They fear that by not working in the office and working from home and maybe video conferencing, there could be people, you know, listening in and there's just more leaks, if you will. And so that's number one. But Yahoo had the, had the thinking going back to the day that they were going to be less productive. I mean, think about it. I'm going to be serious with everybody on Zoom right here. Listen, I know my TV is on right there. All right. And I've got my kid upstairs getting ready to ask me a question. If I get bored, I can go, you know, run around the park or take a walk. Versus my office, I really can't do that because I know my boss is right here watching me. And so it's the productivity issue and it's the security issue when it comes to jobs that can work like that. But it seems like in a lot of ways you're more productive because maybe you do have the time to take those schedule breaks, go out for a run, which I do myself around lunchtime or in the morning. But when you come back, you maybe work until eight or nine o'clock at night. Whereas when you were in the office, you were eating dinner at that time later or with the family. It's exactly right. And here lies a problem. Now, listen, I, I've worked at home remotely probably for almost most of my career, certainly as an entrepreneur. Yes, I go into the radio studio, the TV studio, but this is my home office and I am always on. I mean, yeah, I don't work nine to five, those direct, you know, eight or nine hours, but I'm telling you what, I mean, I am burning the midnight oil, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, probably by midnight, just because I'm wired that way. It, it, most people aren't structured that way. They want the one hour commute. They want the lunch break at 12 o'clock. They want to go with their buddies and see, hang around the water cooler. Uh, and then once they leave at five o'clock, bosses, you know, just assume they're not working. So this, I believe if it goes from the work from home, if you will, we're going to find ourselves working more, maybe not directly those eight direct hours in the middle of the day, but there does have to be a, um, some sort of a pattern to, to rest yourself, rest your body, rest your brain. You know, another thing to think of, too, is uh, you, you have a lot of office buildings, you have elevators, and now there's restrictions on those on how many people can get in those elevators. That's going to change the way things are doing because you can't expect people to, to march up 12 flights of stairs to get to their office every day or stand in a half an hour line at the elevator. So we've got to rethink that. Do you think that once we do start reopening in a more larger fashion, we may stagger employees to only come in on certain days? Hundred percent, and I, actually, I, I know right now from uh, iHeartRadio, iHeartMedia here in Houston. You know, we've probably got about eighty employees right now. Where all our offices are shut down. We're getting a rollout and edict saying, okay, we're going to open the, our offices up in phases. You know, phase one, it may be early June or something. We're only going to have a third of the workforce, and if a third of the workforce is all on the same working floor and that workstations, we're going to stagger those things. It's a, it's no one knows anything right now. Um, you know, Chad keeps using the term as we all do new normal. I don't love that term new normal. I just want it to be normal, but these are new working conditions that we're going to have to work in. You talked about the elevators, um, the productivity. I want to go back to the pro productivity too. I mean, I want you to think about it. Uh, you know, I used to travel quite a bit and a lot of people, they do face to face meetings. And one of the pluses of working virtually number one time saver, but also money saver, if you have to fly across the country for a face-to-face -face meeting, 
there was an entire day lost because you're on an airplane. And there's the expense, there's the hotels, there's the travel, the T&E budget. Nowadays, how, how quickly can you hop on a Zoom call? I think this is going to affect other industries like the airline and the travel industry. There's not going to be as much business travel too. There certainly is, and I know they're, they're suffering right now. And you can also, on the flip side, you can also get some good travel deals for when things do open up once again. Michael Garfield, <laughs> the high-tech Texan, your show is on tomorrow. I know we've got a special guest talking about our welding program. who will be joining you in. What time can they uh, expect to see your show tomorrow? Past 20 years, I'm doing the show from home, but it will be tomorrow, Saturdays at 11 o'clock Central. It's two hours. Great partnership with Houston Community College. And again, we'll be talking to the, the head of your welding program, which is something you physically have to do in person. So a lot of challenges you know, are, are everywhere, including with HCC, which they're uh, jumping. You're jumping over some great hurdles to get things done. Michael Garfield, the high tech Texan. Thanks for joining us on this Friday appearance. Yes, and, sir. We've got Brittany Pacheco now coming in. We're talking about social media and other things. Brittany, good to see you. Hey, good morning, Todd, again. And thank you all once again for joining us on Up to the Minute. As promised from before, uh, we are going to discuss a lot more about graduation. But first, a very important announcement that ends today, and that is the free COVID-19 testing that's happening at our east side campus, or you know, southeast region of our uh, colleges. So this is 100% free. You do not need an appointment. You also don't need to show any symptoms, but this is open to our community. So if you are interested in being tested, today is the last day from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. or until they hit capacity. So be sure you arrive early, Back some patients. You'll need to go to the rest uh, to the parking garage located at 6815 Rustic. Again, that's our HCC Southeast campus. No appointment necessary. 100% free. That's right. And you know, graduation is going viral this year. You know, Brittany, we've got two folks on the show right now that are both Longhorns, um, Chad and uh, Michael Garfield. Yeah, both Longhorns. And um, Chad, could you ever imagine having uh, waited for graduation and the whole thing's going online? I feel so awful for the graduating seniors of, of colleges, of high schools. I mean, no graduation, no prom. I, I could never imagine it. I mean, there's, there's so many uh, treasures in life that are going to be missed due to this. There really is. You know, one of the things we're trying to do to uh, help our students and to assist them is do an online graduation ceremony for them as a number of colleges and high schools are scrambling to, to uh, commemorate our students. So, Brittany, there are a couple of options for students. One is the online ceremony next Friday. Absolutely. So I know we have a graphic here that is a save the date. Everyone uh, who's interested in uh, participating in this virtual graduation, um, that is happening next Friday, May 22nd. We have two sessions. We have our vast academy uh, ceremony that's happening at 11 a.m. And then our general degrees and certificates ceremony, which is our main uh, commencement, is happening at 2 p.m. again, Friday, May 22nd. So be sure to join us then. We're also now encouraging students to send us your photos of you and your regalia or however you're, you're celebrating your graduation. If it's by, you know, a, a cute dance or having balloons, decorating your cap, you know, that unfortunately you won't be wearing at your ceremony, but you can post it to social media and use the hashtag HCC grad 2020. We also have a special social media wall that's going to be populating all of your posts. So again, be sure to use that hashtag HCC grad 2020 and you can be featured on our social media wall. Um, you're also invited to participate in our fall or winter commencement ceremonies that will fingers crossed, take place in person. Hopefully we'll be back in the classroom come fall. Uh, but you know, in the meantime, we have our virtual commencement ceremony, but you also can attend the in-person ceremony that again will take place later at the end of this year. Did you say decorate your cap? I did say decorate your cap. That's a thing. I thought you said decorate your cat. Which I mean, some people dress up their animals. Um, you know, I'm cats for for graduation. 
you know, some people, people do what they want. Why not? You know, like let, let the cat enjoy its moment too. Jeez. I mean, I was just thinking, yeah, decorate your cat. That would be cool to see. We can do a lot in social media with that. So uh, yeah, uh, virtual graduation happening next Friday, hccs.edu slash graduation, all the information. Hey, in summer and fall registration is underway, Brittany. They can go to one website for all of the needs whether it be online classes for the summer or hopefully in person somewhat in the fall. Hopefully. So yes, summer 2020 will be 100% online. Fall is to be determined. Hopefully we'll get an answer, hopefully uh, maybe midway through the summer to find out what's going to happen. But you can certainly go and register for both summer and fall by going to hccs.edu slash now. And hurry because those classes will fill up. I mean, yeah. despite what's going on, People are very, very like gun ho about continuing their education. So be sure you grab your class before it fills up. Yeah, I mean, it's it's always good to register early and keep in mind, students, um, financial aid is still available and our financial aid team is working virtually for you. You can uh, get information from them by simply going to hccs.edu slash financial aid. So you can get all the information you need on that website as well. They are available. And if you have any any uh, need for information during this COVID crisis, faculty, staff, and students can visit hccs.edu slash health dash notice. Exactly. That's where all of our announcements from the college have been being are being kept rather. So if you have questions about the grading policy, about what's going to happen in the future, that's the one place to go. But students, you also have student resources available to you at, at your fingertips. So if you have questions about testing, I know we've had a lot of uh, DMs about when will TSI testing resume so I can, you know, register for my classes and, and what have you. That's really important. So be sure you go to hccs.edu slash COVID-19 students to check out all of the student resources available to you that, you know, our policies have changed ever so slightly just because of the crisis, but become very familiar with what's going on with the different departments. And again, that is going to hccs.edu slash COVID-19 students. Well, that about wraps things up on this show for today. You know, Brittany, I heard some news, which may not mean much to you, but it was kind of heartbreaking to myself. ELO, the new version of them with Jeff Lynn, canceled their tour officially today. So another brick fell. I know, Chad, you had a chance to see, uh, was it Paul McCartney before the shutdown a few months before? Yep, yep. You know, I'm glad. And Michael, I, I you think you and I talked about that. I saw the Eagles literally the weekend before everything shut down. And it's funny. Well, it's kind of ironic. Don Henley was jesting that, you know, during about the whole COVID thing, letting everybody know, you know, you can turn off the news. We're going to give you a good break for that. The week afterwards, they had to call things quit. It certainly is. Uh, it's really hurting the music industry, Michael. It's tough. I remember the Eagles concert. It was right middle of March. I think it was a two night stand at Toyota Center. And that is when all hell broke loose just a few days later. And uh, the music industry and everything from the band, the artists, the production tours, but locally here, the economy, Smart Financial Center, everything from the Woodlands and things. So it, it's tough. Um, I've started seeing some pe some bands try to announce dates like they're coming back the end of summer, maybe in October, but no one knows anything yet. But, you know, Todd and I, we are music fans. It needs to get back quickly. Well, we, that's absolutely right, because I'm missing out on Steely Dan. I won't say <laughs> with Michael McDonald in the fall. All that's out the window. But, you know, there's bigger losers than us. Motley Crue is reporting that uh, they haven't announced the cancellation of the concert. But together, those four guys are standing to lose one hundred and sixty million dollars between the four of them. Just to take away the umlau right now. That band is over. <laughs> <laughs> It is all over. Michael Garfield, thanks for being here on the show with us. We look forward to your show tomorrow and your appearance every Friday. Thanks for having me. And Dr. Chad Duplantis. Chad, I appreciate you taking some time out of your schedule and joining me today. It's great to have you on the show. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Thanks. Thank you, man. And tell, uh, give my love to, uh, to uh, Ellen and the kids as well. Will do. We'll talk okay. to you soon. Thanks, Chad. All right. Brittany, right. thank you Bye. for being here, and, and thanks to all of you for joining us on this Friday morning for Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. We'll see you again on Monday at 10 a.m. Have a good weekend. Try to enjoy it.